Welcome back, everyone. Before we get into our next matchup, let's break down Super Hot Crew's win over the Copenhagen Wolves. Frankly, gentlemen, not too much to talk about, just sheer aggressiveness, unanswered aggressiveness on the side from the crew. Yeah, absolutely fantastic stuff from the Super Hot Crew. Impaler proving why Elise was banned away from him in the SK game, 8-0-9 in that. Got the triple kill as well, we just saw it at the end there. Fantastic performance overall. Copenhagen Wolves, you've got to wonder what was going through their mind? We heard Deficio talking about it when they went into that Dragon Pit and suddenly gave the ace to Super Hot Crew. But overall, dominant victory by Super Hot Crew. Looking really good in this Super Week. Yeah, I completely agree. Just to add and compound the discussion regarding the Copenhagen Wolves, if you go back last week when they ran that Ash composition alongside Kale of Memory Serves, they were picking team fights very early on in the game. They had a composition that needed time, that needed to scale, and they were just forcing objectives. It feels like the Wolves are trying to force a play style with disregard to the composition they're running, and it's not really working for them. No, let's actually take a, sec a step back and, and look more in depth at the teams that we've seen here today. Talking to Mr. Raleigh, he said, where do I see us going in the standings? It's going to be so difficult. Fnatic is moving up, Alliance is very good. Where do you see the Super Hot Crew going? Well, I mean, overall, they're tied at fourth place right now alongside Millennium. But if you were to contrast the two teams, Millennium, we've talked about, they're a one-trick pony right now. Everybody kind of knows what they're going to do. They actually proved a little bit a new step in their tactics, I guess, today. They did okay, but generally they'll run the pit comp. If that doesn't work, they're in trouble. Super Hot Crew, they've got a lot of different ways to win the games right now. We've seen Selfie stepping up, going big. Mr. Rales, always reliable in that bottom lane. Now Kasing alongside him. Seems like a very happy partnership as well. Impaler, we just saw, unkillable in that game. And, well, Mima, honestly, is actually starting to expand his champion pool in that top lane. Mima's always been the silent hero of the top lane. He has always <laughs> delivered, and he's definitely one of the most underrated players. And I really just want to mirror that sentiment. If you contrast Millennium and Super Hot Crew, and you just think about the way they perform and the way they compete with other teams, you really feel like Super Hot Crew is one of the only teams that has the ability to challenge the likes of SK and Alliance and Fnatic. Millennium, if they're not on picks, if they're not on Leona and Assassins, you're like, well, they're not that great. So it was good seeing them performing okay with the Ziggs mid laner, but they, they didn't play Siege. They just didn't play the comp the way it was meant to be played. The, the one thing I would say about them is they are one of the teams that have been able to adapt very quickly. You know, they've got a coach, they've got an analyst, they are listening to outside sources, they're a fresh young team, and they're open to new ideas. Yeah, and they did manage to beat SK Gaming just uh, earlier in the day here as well. So definitely got what it takes to beat those top teams. Let's uh, turn our attention to the Copenhagen Wolves and currently 3 and 13. <sighs> Naga news. No, it's not. And the Copenhagen Wolves are struggling. I mean, the last time they won a game was week six. Okay, that's not bad, last week. And before that was week two. They went in a seven game losing streak. One shy of Fnatic's loss from the spring split. And for the Copenhagen Wolves, if a few more losses are stacked up, they are starting to get closer to like, guaranteed not gonna make top two, a few more after that, guaranteed not gonna be top six. It's, it just seems like nothing is working for the team and something serious has to change. Yeah, they, they are plumb bottom right now. And honestly, it doesn't look like they're going to get out of that position. Super Week's not going too well for them either. They've got two games tomorrow, I believe. So to see whether they can Alliance turn something Alliance and around. SK. Yeah, exactly. The top two teams they're going to play tomorrow. It's a potential 0-4 for the Copenhagen Wars. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to see where that goes. Thank you very much, gentlemen. And now we're going to send them back over to join the Fischio at the desk. Thank you very much, Shox. Let's head into our last match of the day then as Fnatic take on Gambit Gaming. Fnatic are so far 2-0 and zero this Super Week. They kick things off with a strong performance and victory against Rockout where they pulled out an interesting pick in the top lane for Soas. Yeah, so we had Zix top lane for Soas against the Jax and he picked Exhaust, said afterwards he would like Ignite normally when he dominates the lane, but he had to take Exhaust for the team, of course. What a team player. Decent enough performance. I mean, the pick was very smart because Fnatic managed to group early on and then just siege down towers and therefore forced Jax to never be able to split push, but forced him to stay with the team. So Sasos, even though he actually farmed pretty well, never really got to do anything in the game. Yeah, they also had a great game against Millennium, another win where they managed to control the match with great ward control and therefore getting the picks across the map to really get the entire team rolling. Yeah, so Millennium, who they played against, were very, very passive and Fnatic used it to get full control of the map, of the objectives. And we just have to highlight Yellowstar. He is so strong at the moment. He was setting up kills left and right. I mean, he has 25 deaths, which is the least for supports in the European, European LCS. He has a 6.72 KDA, so he leads the 
support in KDA in the ULCS. And we just have to say, Fnatic also as a team and him as a player are looking better and better for every game they play. And earlier today for Gambit, it was another tough game as they once again lost out, this time to Millennium. So they fell behind to this pick comp from Millennium and Millennium used it to just walk around the map, find fights all the time. And we did see Skarner from Diamond. Didn't have much of an impact early on, but he is a bit of a level six jungler. The thing uh, I question is actually not his play. It's more the fact that Elise was open and they went for Skana. If he, if he had picked Elise, he would have been able to do something early game against Lee Sin, been able to help Darren up in his top lane here and prevent some of the snowballing from happening. But he picked Skana, farmed to level six, and by that time, it was already too late because Codnex had picked up two, of, two kills, I believe, and one assist already. Yeah, played it passively, which is exactly the thing yeah. you don't want to be doing against Fnatic these days. Now, let's hear from Gambit Gaming's Diamond about playing against the Spring Split champions Fnatic, and in particular, their AD carry, Reckless. I really like to play against Fnatic. It's really easy to play against them. Their jungler is really passive and he only protects his lanes, never going aggressive. But sometimes Faker or So is doing some crazy stuff and winning the game out of that. Or Reckless is playing all the best he can and he's really great at the game. So this is the only guy who I'm afraid of. Funny to hear Diamond calling Cyanide out for being passive there, <laughs> yeah. considering that Skarner game that he had against Millennium where he didn't move out of his own jungle to level 6. It is hard to do something against Lee Sin when every single lane falls behind, but yeah, he should have picked Lee in my opinion, could have done more. Well, we'll see if he changes that one this time around. First though, we're going to check out the starting lineups. On the blue side today, it's Fnatic with Soaz in the top lane, Cyanide in the jungle, Peke in the mid lane, Reckless the AD carry, and Yellow Star the support. And on the red side, Gambit Gaming with Darren in the top lane, Diamond in the jungle, Nick as the mid laner, Genja as the AD carry, and of course, Edward is the support. So let's take another look then at lolesports.com to see how you guys voted on this match. And according to those numbers, you pick Fnatic by 84%. We have to be clear about this. Fnatic versus Gambit is a classic matchup. Yes. It used to be a classic matchup. It's kind of the point here because this is not the, the 2013 Gambit that pushed Fnatic on all levels when it came to uh, particularly the Spring Split final, if you remember that best of five real thriller of a game. This is not the same Gambit. No, and also look back to Season 2, where Moscow 5, Gambit, of course, were dominating everything. There's, it's very different for the team here, of course. Mm. Without Alex, it was a big hit to the team, but nothing really works for them at the moment. I mean, the two games they played is super weak. They didn't stand a chance. I mean, they got outclassed and just lost every lane early on and lost the game from, the, from there on. They really need to step it up here against Fnatic. Not sure we can even say... Alex gone and now we've got Nick and he's not performing. No, no, That's Nick is why, doing because fine. Nick's doing really, really well in his new role at Gambit. Let's uh, move on from that one though as we are getting into Champion Select and the first two bands coming out. No surprises here. Kale for Fnatic, Cassidy for Gambit. So Kale being banned away against both Darian and Nick. And of course Cassidy very standard. I wonder if Fnatic want to try and aim towards some junglers and then maybe first pick Elise in for Cyanide if they ban away Elise and get them. Diamond on Skana once again and try and do the same thing. For now, it doesn't look like it. Instead, they actually take out the Yasuo against Nick. So, two mid bands, we can say, targeting towards Nick. Two bands to Nick. Well, they keep that trend up here. And will Gambit also stick to mid laners? Well, they'll take out Lulu, which is, I guess we can say, a, div a diverse ban, as he's probably Kale as well, since he can get it rid of it for Soas or for X Peke. Maybe we'll even see a Ziggs ban coming out because, again, that's kind of a, sure. a blanket ban, if you like, that covers multiple roles, or at least it does now after Soaz played the Ziggs earlier on in Super Week in that top lane. Evelyn actually will okay. be the ban here for Fnatic, so that points to first pick Lee Sin. Yeah, could be first pick Lee Sin. Of course, if they do first pick a mid laner or top laner, and then Gamma goes with the Lee Sin, they have Elise as the backup jungle pick here for Cyanide. So they only take away one of the junglers. We need to see if Gambit actually wants to ban away Elisa Lee Sin then as their last ban. Well, they've taken Cassidy and Lulu so far, and they'll take out Oriana as the final oh, ban. And look fast. at this, Ziggs left up and Fnatic say, yep, we'll take that. You don't know where it's going to go. So instant locking there, Ziggs here. We need to see if Gambit wants to get Elisa, Elise or Lee Sin. 
for Diamond so he can start making some earlier plays because I really think they need to get some early aggression on here. Help out the lanes, try and snowball a game actually. If they do pick Renekton for Darren over this top lane, they should pick an aggressive jungler with it and just try and see if they can shut down whatever source is playing in the top lane. If it is the Zix, they need to be able to gank him early on. And if he goes top lane with something else, if they want to try and snowball Darien, they do have the chance now with both aggressive junglers being up. Well, let's see. We're going to see a possible... I say a possible Lucian, let's be honest. Well, this was fitting probably, pretty well. Yeah, he's probably going to be a Lucian in there for Genja. And a possible Twisted Fate first pick here all right, for all Gambit. Right. So locking that in. So it really fits into the whole, let's try and snowball a game here. If you get some good ganks early from the Twisted Fate, you can really start to get things rolling. And of course, Lucian for Genja. No questions asked. We need to see if he wants to build Trinity Force again as the first item. That's pretty much the only AD carry in both NA and EU, and also Korea. I have seen at least for the last few weeks. Yeah, well, at the best of times, Genja has sometimes left us with question marks and a lot of surprises as to where he goes with his builds. And obviously, AD carries uh, obviously more than, than last week and maybe even more than yesterday. You know, people get into these trends, but something new to play around with Genja seems to be still finding his feet when it comes to how to really build properly sure. on each AD I mean, carry in 4.10. If he gets enough time with it, he will get to his late game point anyway and be very strong. So we need to see what he decides to build. And if, if, he, if he thinks <laughs> it's the best build, then of course, fair enough. And yeah. Well, you're not going to get any of the junglers here. No. Mr. So Diamond. That's that's one way to do it, right? You ban out Evelyn, and then you take Elise, and you take Lee Sin, which tells us then that Soaz will have that uh, Lee Sin in the top lane. Yes. As we saw from him yesterday, we're going to have Ziggs in the middle lane for XPK up against Nick's Twisted Fate, and Cyanide will sit with Elise, which then leaves Diamond with a bit of a question mark now. I mean, it could be Skarner again, yeah. if he wants to, to play it once again. We could potentially see maybe a Jarvan. I know he practiced. A lot of a certain champion, which he won't be able to pick. Sad enough for him, which would actually fit in here. Skana should probably be the one for him. And we need to see again if he wants to farm up to level 6 and then start ganking, or if he wants to try and do something before here. If the lanes survive by themselves to the level 6 point, then the farm tactic really works on Skana because you are so good at clearing the jungle, you get a lot of farm from it. But it requires your laners to survive the first few levels by themselves and dodge around the ganks from, from Cyanide. So, Irelia actually was a last second switch out there. Looked like they may be going for Nami for Edward in the support role, even though we've got that Thresh still left open. So, Darian gonna have Irelia. Had a bit of a torrid time in the last game. You hear the crowd there cheering. Reckless oh, on Bane would be something very interesting to see. There's a champion who really shines with Bladers Rune King and Ghostblade. You become mm -hmm. very, very strong in this mid game in these one on one split push fights if you go for them or generally also team fights just for those six seconds where you have your ghost blade you will be very very strong and picking cleanse against twisted fate remember you can't use cleanse against skana you need the quick silver sash so it's used against of course aurelia and twisted fate so interesting fanatic need the lanes of this one though i mean you have cleanse and you have bane it's a very risky lane early on here we need to see if they get the lane swap or what gambit can do against them yeah, especially against something like Nami, who's going to have a couple of different options to really lock you up. We'll see though what Gambit decides to end with here. Looking for that support for Edward around in your screen. And to be honest, he's impressed us recently with Thresh, oh. but it's going to be Nami. Yeah, so very nice to set up ganks with Twisted Fate. If you land the gold card, very easy bubble you can then follow with, so you have a lot of CC. And a little cool trick with Nami, if you do max your W, you should actually be able to break the Black Shield from uh, Morgana around level 5 on Nami. As long as Morgana doesn't max her Black Shield, of course, which normally they don't, they will max the Q. So you can use your W to break the shield and then land your bubble afterwards, which would be very nice setup with, of course, the Twist of Fate coming down, trying to kill uh, both Yellowstar and Reckless in this bottom lane here. But if Fnatic do get the lane swap, would definitely benefit them. Get some farm on Reckless, get a few levels, otherwise with the cleanse and just by being vain, he's going to have a hard time early on. And then send Soas maybe round the jungle with Cyanide. Yeah, I mean, you could do some crazy gang. <laughs> if there's if there's one thing that's good about Elise and Lee Sin and how strong they are early on, put them both together and you've got a pretty deadly combo that's going to run riot through the jungle and maybe appear on a couple of those lanes. And the lane swap would work well against Aurelia. We talked about it last game, how she needs to get a Trinity Force early on to really get her mid-game power spike. Mm. You would delay it by lane swapping here. And Fnatic, because they have Vayne and Zix, they do have some late game. Lee Sin, though, will fall off. 
Well, guys, now that you know the champions, you still think that Fnatic are gonna win this game, or can Gambit turn it? Tweet hashtag FNC win or hashtag, hashtag GMB win to at LOL Esports. We'll see if your votes actually change for this one. Something tells me that they possibly won't. If we look down that Fnatic lineup, you've got Vayne, a champion, which you've seen Reckless previously on do wonders with. We know that Vayne right now and how the items have really changed around in 4.10 fit to a hyper carry like Vayne really well. But there is a comp here from Gambit who can actually dive onto Reckless. I mean, Twisted Fate poured in his face, Skana goes towards him mm. before the quick silver sash will be completed, and they might be able to lock him down, but it's going to be hard. They have to go through the Rex, of course, they have to go through Magana, Black Shield and everything to try and deal for, for Reckless. All ifs and buts at this stage. We're going to find out, though, how this one goes down as we get into game for Fnatic versus Gambit, our final match of the day. And Fnatic, of course, looking to keep up their unbeaten super weak run. And actually, they will go left level with SK Gaming in the table in second place if they can win this game. So they have been looking better. I mean, I believe before this week, they've only done like 2 2 one 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 for all the weeks. Yeah. Obviously, if they win this game, it will be the first time where they actually break it. And it will be good for them because they are looking better and better. They seem to figure out the 4.10 here. Of course, we could give some credit to Aaron here, the new coach. Mm -hmm. And we need to see how they want to play this comp because they do have the option of putting Reckless in one lane, we're talking out of laning phase of course here, put him to a split push and put Source in a different lane to split push as well, and then try and simply stretch Gambit out. But it's always risky against the Twisted Fate because he can just pour down and turn a one-on-one -on -one to a 2v1 very, very fast. So I'm not sure how they exactly want to play with this combi, or they just want to look for, for team fights and protect Reckless as much as possible and let him do all the work in these fights. The vote there, 68% to Fnatic still on the same team, but come down a little bit from the lolesports.com vote, which was 84%. 80 yeah, or it was 84%, like 84 something. Uh, in favor of Fnatic. So, you guys thinking that maybe Gambit will be able to turn this one? As I said before, Fnatic versus Gambit, a classic match over the years. Maybe a little bit different. Our Gambit really struggling here in the summer split. But look at all these early wards from Fnatic in the jungle of Gambit to try and spot out, okay, where they're sending their duel and We need to make sure Reckless and Yellowstar go the opposite way. We need this lane swap. So they have a lot of deep wards. And they will actually spot now four members. Also the duel lane from Gambit moving to this red. So they know we need to send Reckless and Yellowstar down to this bottom lane now. Even though they're far away, they have to run the entire way down and dodge around Genja and Edward. So I was trying that with the Q. Of course, he's a lame sin rather than a jungle Lee sin. So I'm not going to have. For now, he's going to be jungle Lee sin. Yeah, so for now he is. He is. You're not wrong on that front. Actually, uh, sticking around with Cyanide's Elise right for the start of this one. It's going to mean that Peke and Nick, since his buddy systems are in place, maybe have a bit extra free time. Look at Yellow Star's position there. He's actually just going to spot them coming across and now so has and Cyanide moving towards that middle lane Who's area. The there is uh, uh, Yellow Star just going to try and disrupt them a little bit. Yep. That might be enough time for Fnatic to actually come over and get involved on this blue buff. Yellow Star continues to be a real pain in the rear end. There is Ziggs coming around. Diamond going to take a lot of damage. But here comes Lee Ziggs. First blood comes in for Yellow Star. Darian's going to have to flash here. Will flash away. And that frees up the blue buff for Fnatic and the first blood. That was so nice tactically. Such a smart play. I mean, both Lee Sin and Elise will take the blue buff. The first blue buff very, very fast. And then they can just move instantly over with Yellow Star, trying to delay Gambit Dragon. as long as possible. And because now Lucian is in this top lane, Edward hasn't shown himself out in the mid lane. Now move towards the top lane once again. They know there's only the chance of someone like Diamond maybe making it a time to stop them from this dragon here. Well, and he decided not to run down there. Yeah, it started coming, but backed away from it. Fnatic really not messing around at the start of this game. First blood coming in early, managing to steal away both blue buffs and get in a dragon here. Three minutes 40 into the game. That leaves them 1,300, 1,400 gold ahead right from the very get-go. And look okay, at this, Darian here, may end up being the first victim. Reckless does take a tower hit, but there's the Q landing. Darian's going nowhere. Cyanide gets that kill, although Morgana did Dying go to down the to the tower. So it's not really a problem for them. No damage was done to him, and therefore no kill for Gambit. What a start for Fnatic. Such an aggressive and such a good start here. You got Dragon, you got double blue buff, you even picked up the first blood, and the second kill now onto Darian, forcing his teleport as well. He will be able to pick up some farm though, Saw still on 1 CS. Good running around, part of Dragon and kills instead of 
of farming. So Darren at least now can get some farm. He's one-on-one -on -one against Reckless at the moment. Both AD carries, of course, even on farm. They've just been staying in the lanes. And yeah, <laughs> those mid laners just like, well, World of action, not really for me. There is a satchel charge onto the gold card. He flashed me there. Free bubble and a kill it. for Gambit. And just like that, turning it on completely. There's a stun though on the wall against Darian. The knock up and the binding coming in. And I don't think Darian's escaping this one either. Tumble will leave Darian with literally nothing. He's going to run into the oh, tower. Maybe He'll be the death of him anyway. Ah, he no. tried. He tried. He wanted to get, to get into the tower. Hope the kill would go over to Yellowstar. Instead, Reckless managed to pick it up. Edward still staying around his mid lane here. We did see the combo with Twisted Fate, point on click stun. You follow up very easily with the bubble. And just have a lot of CC to actually take down x on Zix here. Good damage from uh, Edward as well there onto Soaz's Lee Sin. Respect an army. Respect, Respect. an army. And Genja continues his free time of farm, as does Reckless down bottom. Reckless has got a 10 CS lead, 1 0 1 as well. It's 3-1, five and a half minutes in. Not a scoreline that we've been really used to seeing, although I have to also say, when we look at trends, 4.10 has brought us a lot more kills generally in a yeah. lot of the games. So we have, we have had two slow games today, but the last two games have really been action all around the, the map, pretty much from the start. I mean, we saw early first plots from the junglers with some ganks. We've seen a lot of dragon fights early on as well. And just some very fast games. And this one, with the start from Fnatic here, if they can keep it going, they can just keep extending the lead. They do need to get some farm on Soas though. Who's still very far behind farm-wise compared to Darian, but will of course have goal from the Dragon from his two assists, so he should be happy enough. And he just keeps farming away with uh, Sana. Doesn't even need to go to a lane yet. Yeah, just to give you a bit of a comparison on that one, when you look at 0-2 Darian, who's got a bit more farm in there than Soas, who's himself got two assists with that Dragon. It's about 200 gold more, so gives you a little bit of an idea how that all works out generally over the uh, how that gold is going to be spread. Darian himself now leaving that bottom lane saying, look at this, we're five minutes into the game. I've died twice already. In the last game, we saw him die four times very early on in the match. And I think he's just bored of dying at this point, <laughs> going for the safer option of following Diamond around. Yeah, good guy. Jungle creeps won't really kill you. Well. Unless, of course, you have Broken Shot, and you will die to your red buff. Oh, burn. I love you, Broken Shot. Don't worry. <laughs> So, Edward here, going to be waiting on that top side of the map. Darian's actually going to come over there as well, possibly, but Fnatic saying, you know what? Don't even need to be there. Let them farm up because our AD carry is farming quicker, already has a kill, already has assist, already Getting got the Cutlass in, and that tower is going to be going down. If not maybe on this exact wave, then certainly on the one directly following. And there's the second spawn in of the blue buff. I'm interested to see whether Fnatic keep up that blue buff pressure that they had before. And there we go, Twisted Fate going to get involved. Hey, it was yeah. smited away on towards Sinai. Bomb comes out, Yellow Star's low. That's a good bubble on to Peke. Diamond's going to be coming around as well. Peke needs to get away from this one. Gold card will follow through. And Genja gets the kill on that one. Diamond in the middle of no man's land, but he's grabbed Yellow Star. And that's a double kill now for Genja. So everyone from Gamma just collapsed onto this blue buff here because they knew Fnatic was doing it and with Rectus in the bottom lane, they knew they could be five versus four. Picked up two kills here. Very good reply from Gambit, getting some much needed gold. They still need to be careful though because this Vayne is just farming away like he wants to. Oh, they're going for Sana now. TP coming in the from blue Darian. Not going to be spotted there for Fnatic, and there we go. Got vision now, Cyanide realizing and maybe in a bit of trouble from this one, guys. Reckless will come around to help. They've got Lee Sin on the bottom side of that area as well. They actually turn around, going in towards Nick. Repel comes down, Eddie's going low as well. There's Lee Sin jumping up to the front, and they do manage to finish off Nick. Will they get any more? They're going to keep going around. Yellow Star's like, I want a ward. We're not going to get any more kills from this one, but fast reaction from Fnatic. So we see both teams invading on the blue buff. Oh. Sun went in by himself, and the rest of the team joined once Gamma actually collapsed onto them. Now Diamond and Darion behind enemy lines here. Mm, Diamond's... Well, that's that's just really hurting because I'm going to be going down to the throat. Yellow Star they coming up here around the dragon. Execute. Yellow Star is coming around. This should be an easy binding for him. Oh, he's picked the wrong direction, but there it is. He's going to catch Darion. 
Lee Sin will be following through. There's Peke as well. Mines won't actually get the slow there onto Darian, but they've got full vision of him. Slow comes down. So as surely will be able to help finish off his kill. It's Peke it is. with a bouncing bomb right through to get the fifth of the game for Fnatic. So while Gambit picked up two kills when they invaded on the blue buff from Fnatic, Fnatic just did the exact same thing here. Two kills on the Gambit. Took a while. Had to chase them around here. Also managed to pick up the blue buff and keep the pressure going. Genji has just been happily farming up here. Of course, he got the double kill in the last fight, so he's gonna be very, very strong. Need to see what he decides to build. Dragon here. Darren with no teleport. He needs to run from base, so Gambit will just give it up. Yeah, so has got TP, so he could get involved if he needs to. Now, I have to ask you a question here, so. Gen just had time constantly in this top lane, complete free farm, decided to go with a second Doran's Blade on that top side, even though he's probably not getting into any fights in the next couple of minutes the way that he's so playing this he one. gives the lifesteal, if he builds Infinity Edge, he's gonna need the lifesteal from the Doran's building up anyway, because he won't build anything, anything. He, he's not gonna go Bloodthirster, of course, so he's not gonna go Blade, double, he can still go Blade, but with the double Doran's, and if you do build Infinity Edge, you're gonna get the 6% lifesteal. And from before, Diamond actually did pick up the blue buff. So I was wrong on it. Still two kills for Fnatic, but a blue buff for Diamond. Yeah. Um, Twisted Fate. No, you know, not the end of the world if a Twisted Fate doesn't get that buff. Since he can uh, sustain his mana thanks to that blue card. And now we see Darian going to the top lane. Gonna have a bit of free time to actually farm on that front. And they've sent Genja now down towards the bottom lane. And he's going Trinity Force again, Deficio. Trinity Force once again. Last game, I believed after Trinity Force, he went towards the Infinity Edge, which, yes, you get some crit from the Trinity Force, but they don't actually synergize too well. You really want to get like a static shift of Phantom Dancer to provide the extra crit for your Infinity Edge, the synergy. Again, Kobe was talking a lot about it in the NALCS, how you need to maximize your crit when you do have Infinity Edge, because it's such an expensive item and you need the damage to really reach your power spike in towards the late game as well, so... Gendy decided to not, first of all, go Trinity early. I'm uh, sorry, Infinity Edge early, and then Trinity Force as well, so... Don't 100% agree. Let's see what he's gonna build, though. Yeah, I'll see how that helps out for him. I mean, if he does manage to get up to that Trinity Force quickly, then he can still have a big impact with it in of course, his I mean, yeah, he does. he does have two, two early kills here. So he should be able to complete it fairly soon. On the other side though, Reckless has already got his Blade of the Ruin King fa uh, finished. As you can see there, the damage already in Darian losing half of his health instantly. And you see it again, Gambit, they sent their bottom lane, or their dual lane to the bottom lane. Instantly Fnatic are like, okay, we're just gonna send Reckless and Yellowstar to the top lane. We don't even want to deal with any 2v2 action here, we just want Reckless to keep farming. And now once again, they can put pressure onto the tower. Sana joining in, if Darian had stayed to try and do defend the tower, they were just a, went straight for him and killed him once again. So smart by Darian to back away, knowing he couldn't do anything to defend this tower here. Now they need to try and get to the bot tower. Now we see Genja and Edward trying to do a similar thing on the bottom side of the map. And actually, that's a quite big chunk of damage onto Soas. He actually has gone tanky, as he did before when he played that Lee Sin in the solo lane. Gonna be going the way of the Sunfire Cape as his first item. And he probably needs a bit of help down though on this bottom side of the map. Gambit got a ward inside of the tribush and they'll be feeling safe with that. Nice another bubble. good bubble coming through and another chunk of damage going the way of Soaz. And I think that is going to be the tower. Maybe not this wave, but the next one afterwards. So Reckless is actually moving now down towards his bottom lane with his blade, feeling strong enough for him to actually lane against Genji. I'm not sure if the tower is going to go. It will, unless Peck actually walks down to ult the lane and clear the wave, but it looks like the tower will go down and then Reckless can just pick up the lane afterwards. So trading top tower for bot tower at least. So here is Reckless saying getting involved. Is that enough to scare Gambit away? Well, there's your answer. It's not. Genji gets the final shot in and Gambit take their second turret of this matchup. Leaves us in terms of gold still with about a 2,000 lead for Fnatic. And let's not forget the Dragon taken very early on in this game after the uh, blue invade and Twice the kills already, for yeah. Fnatic. Yeah, we've already seen a couple of them going down. So Fnatic really holding strong on that front. We've also seen the mid laners now getting their first item complete. Both of them going for the Athenes. Especially good on Zix because you still need to spam your abilities here. We have seen Twisted Fates mix up the build. Some still goes for Athenes. We've seen Morella Normicon, Triple Thorns into Death Cabba's first item. There's a lot of options now for, this, for mid lane item builds. 
This tower, however, is gonna go down because it's. Oh, it. dead. Yeah, it's down to. Yeah, that's the binding cocoon combo that we were talking about, funnily enough, in that last game as well. One of them hits, the neck, uh, the second one's. And it's sure so to annoying to play against. You just know, if one hits, that's it. I'm stunlocked yeah. for like five seconds. I'm just gonna stand here and die. And Peke just throwing his ultimate into that extra damage. I mean, he's sat with a blue buff. He's gonna be coming quickly off cooldown and actually will be getting himself another blue buff just to refresh that last one. And with one minute 18 for the Dragon. Fnatic actually have four men on the bottom side of the map. See that Soa's been forced back a little bit in lane here by Darian, who's now got that phage done. He's pushing it down. He was taking some damage, but still a very big wave from him, actually. Oh, jumping away, baiting us a little bit. Just trading some damage back and forth here. Darian wants to just push it out. And most likely back away, unless he's very aggressive, because he's very far off and there's not a lot of wards. Oh, <laughs> Darian has been completely baited into that one. Well, oh, that was pretty sick stuff from Soas though, just diving behind him as he dashed forward, kicked him into tower range. Yellow Star actually popping his ultimate, which he didn't really need in the end. Cyanide coming around as well, and Darian being somewhat, I feel, outsmarted there on the <laughs> top side of the map. Well, he does have teleport. Dragon spawns in 30 seconds. I'm not sure if Gambit actually wants to try and team fight for it. But then again, they can't keep giving up all the dragons for Fnatic. We're just gonna see it one more time if Soas. Darren actually jumped in for the minion, yeah. and then Soas just walked behind him like, okay, I'm gonna take him to the tower then. And he's my teammate. Yeah, the other star actually got the kill there with the proc of his ultimate, which is always a nice feeling to have. But Dragon's coming up here. Let's have a look at the mini map because Soaz is actually recalling to base. Shop first. Darian has come down. Both have teleport. Darian won't need it, of course, because he's already in and around that area. As again, Yellow Star gonna land more crowd control. A lot of damage coming his way, though. Oh, Rock Edward. Edward. There is Nami gonna be knocked back and Peke burst him down on the killing spree. Now Diamond gonna be chased by Cyanide. A good slow will land. It's all gonna be about the cocoon. Darren and Diamond. So as is now coming. There's no tower there for Nick, so it's all about the Q, which does land. Is he gonna wait for the gold card? He flashes behind him. Nick will flash away from the binding. Dodgersly cocoon as well. But so as may just have enough damage. No, Nick somehow survives it. Managed to survive here still. Dragon is alive. Diamond died for it. Edward had to die as well. Both members still have flash ready in case they get out here for a fight with Fnatic now. Only sending two members for Dragon is pushing up this mid tower because there's no wave clear. There's old on Nick to try and go down and join if he wants to help Ginger trying to kill Soas or Sana here. Ginger gonna try and be the man. Be a man, come on. Need. And that turret has gone down. Yeah, as well. Dragon's gonna go. Darian's coming late to this party. And there's two champions that could dive over the wall. In fact, the rest of Fnatic coming in as well. Darian caught completely out. That's his fifth death of this game. Makes it at least 10, because I remember five deaths yeah. from earlier on today as well. Not been a good day so far for Darian. At least Fnatic here in this game. Slowly but surely approaching a 10,000 gold lead. So a bit like the game yesterday between Fnatic and Millennium. Fnatic managed to get a lot of wards around the Dragon before everything started. And then he just positioned himself before the Dragon even spawned and waited for Millennium to move into the river. Gambit here. It's the same deal. We get the wards from Fnatic, they're in position. Gambit walks in to try and get some wards down and just get caught up by either Elise or Yellow Star, or Morgana, sorry, and end up dying for it. And then in the end, it's just another dragon for Fnatic and some kills on top of it. And Source before didn't manage to get the kill on to, uh, to Nick Gill. Well, Edward forced to flash away there. I do actually think before Source, when he went in, he flashed a little bit too early. He didn't get the damage from his Q, so he. Q towards him, Flash didn't get the damage, and therefore Nick actually managed to survive. However, I don't think Fnatic minds. Small, small mistake. And I might be wrong as well, this looked like it. There's another blue buff here to wait for next Peke. And before the game, we, we talked about how passive Millennium were against Fnatic and how Gambit couldn't do couldn't afford to do the same here again today. I mean Fnatic, let's be honest, at level one, right at the start of the game yeah. were Incredibly, you may even argue, over aggressive as Darian gonna get caught out. Ultimate's running from Morgana. Darian, where Diamond he's going? Too. Getting stunned up. Diamond is gonna be coming around. Has so has got the damage. He's landed the Q. It'll be enough. And now even fighting a little bit as well. Binding will be dodged away from. Diamond keeps chasing. His ulti was already used. And Twisted Fate will help secure that one. Now a good tidal wave from Edward over the side. And I think Yellow Star will become another victim. It's gonna take a while, but it is a double kill for Diamond. Double kill for Diamond here. Gambit were ready for the gank. 
Nick instantly teleported up. Diamond was running as well to join in for the fight here and turned it around. Darren did have to die, but remember he was 0 5, so he doesn't really give too much gold anymore. And Gamma can actually afford to sacrifice him and pick up a double kill on Diamond here on the Skarner. Continue to build very, very tanky. Only as the Elder Lizard has damage. And we'll just become this tank who goes for forward towards you, slow you down, try and hook on to someone like Reckless if he can. Expect could be a target as well. We need to see once they actually build the Quicksilver set. The buff control from Fnatic has been very, very good so far as well. Constantly invading once the blue buff of Gambit has spawned on into the map. What's the next target here though for Fnatic? With that taken down, there's an inner turret still left in the bottom lane and in that top lane. For now, seem quite content with getting a little bit of extra farm. There's a long range cocoon binding. Satchel charge will come across, will explode in time. Everything will explode in time. Nick's gonna fall, and it's cyanide that goes on the killing spree. So to get the kill once again, we see the whole Elise Morgana with Pekka set it up with the Rapper Docky first, forced Nick to outlast early, and then managed to pick up the kill. Now they move towards his top lane. Nobody's there from Gambit to defend it. Nick still has about 17 seconds, and his ult should be the same, but it's going to be a tower for Fnatic. Now, I mean, no real reaction here from Gami. What are you going to do? They managed to lock up Edward, so that's going to try and follow through. There's a stun onto the wall, and that's surely a dead Edward here. One more auto attack from Reckless will finish that one. And Fnatic moving so quickly away from the tower to get the kills. They got the tower as well in the end, and now they're going to be pushing in him. And with a Ziggs, I'm not sure how down. Uh, the rest of Gambit that are alive right now outside of Edward who just went down are going to be able to hold on to this. See, getting some damage and just poking away Diamond, looking to try and engage. Flash is ready. So if the Black Shield comes in from Yellowstone in time, he won't be able to grab anyone. And now Rex is just pushing his mid lane. Source joining in with the rest of Fnatic. Such a quick spin around from top to mid lane. Constant pressure calling used by Genji. Actually, will be knocked away by the Satchel Charge of Peke. I mean, Gambit do have a decent amount of wave clearing there. Gambit's going to get locked up. Where's he going to go? Actually, does manage to get away to the back. Cyanide crawling through. The spinally will be enough to get the kill. Cyanide locked up by the bubble and eventually shut down. So, 1v1 there. So, 1v1, but still Fnatic. They keep the pressure going, constantly getting some damage on the towers. Seem like they want to back away now. Should have quite some gold after some fights. Some towers going down as well. Dragon and 1v1. No, they're actually staying with this. Oh, Diamond. Oh, Diamond. Knocked against the wall. Satchel charge. Oh, oh got good away. flash, though. Good flash into the bubble. Edward really saving his life there. No follow through from Fnatic. Reckless and Yellowstar. And so has both. Oh, oh, three had flash available. Decided not to go through. Fnatic has got a load of gold to spend, as you mentioned before. Pretty much, well, 12 to 1800 gold across the board. Actually, uh, Cyanide did end up picking up. A rando in Zoman now in there with his ancient golem. Dragon in 40 seconds, Source can just pick up some farm, then go back to base and should be able to get to the dragon before it spawns. He's recalling now. It's a good timing for him. And the rest of Fnatic already moving towards the dragon area. We can see the same deal. They put up some pink wards. Try and spot out Gambit if Gambit moves in to try and stop them. This time around they are very far away from it. Don't think they really want to go into a team fight here. No. I don't think so either. Then again, they have actually played very aggressive in this game. Even though they fell behind early, they tried to make plays, especially at the blue buff where they picked up the two kills. But Fnatic still has been one step ahead of them. Especially also, just look at the wards around the map here. The blue wards from Fnatic just in this dragon area. They can see everything happening. If Gambit moves in towards them, we'll spot them. Yellowstar is waiting in the bush to land a binding, and then they can go all in. Yeah, binding into Cocoon, the tried and tested combo out of Fnatic here. That CC enough to lock everyone up. Then you've got even the time to put that satchel charge in and knock them even closer towards you. There is a binding coming out. Didn't quite have the range. Indra actually, in terms of direction, he dodged right into it pretty much. But Fnatic here pushing that mid wave up. Top lane is actually pushing in favor of Gambit. Bottom lane is pretty much even down on the bottom side of the river. It's that binding close to landing onto Darien as well. Gambit needs to be real careful here. Fnatic are just looking for the fight because they know that so far. Diamond might be caught out here. Source doesn't manage to get onto him. No, Sana Q does. Q landing onto the minion, but here is the push through. Cocoon has already landed. Don't even need the binding. They'll throw that out to the rest of the team. And that leaves a five versus four. With Gambit trying to hold on to the turret. Will Fnatic just say, you know what, guys, let's back away. Let's have ourselves a Baron. So Gambit actually had some good wards in the jungle here to see where Fnatic was moving. Yet Diamond 
I'm not sure what he was doing up there in this top lane, got caught out of position, and now Fnatic starting the Baron, still a ward from Gambit here, so they know it's happening. There's a ward in the back as well, that'll be spotted by the pink. We so. are very early, so you take a lot of damage from it, it's gonna be risky for Fnatic, and they actually disengage from it. Just force Gambit to move in, stop them here. And now Fnatic just put their mark on the jungle, look at the wards. And here is Yellow Star marching on forward. Boots some mobility. There's a flash. Ulti is going to go. Who's he going to go for? Darian Edward. He kind of went for both, and both of them got away from it. A little unlucky there from Yellow Star. And those are the kind of plays that you need to make. Sometimes a, a little bit of a risk can give you a high reward. And managed to trade flashes with Edward. The both supports about flash for the next fight. Sana now on this blue buff once again. I mean, Fnatic's really been controlled this blue buff for the entire game from level one. Where they moved in there, stopped him from doing the blue buff, and picked it up. I think Diamond managed to pick it up once or twice, but that's been about it. They're all Fnatic instantly moving around for the final inner turret that stands on Gambit's side of the map. Will they be able to hold them off? Six already throwing down that early minefield, and yes, they have Twisted Fate to throw those wild cards out and get rid of those minion ways, but just the zoning that you get with Ziggs, we see it there, Cocoon actually landing onto Edward, here's the ultimate coming out of Peke, not quite the damage to get the kill, but they were looking for the tower anyway, even doing some oh, good damage Nick to Nick there on he's the out backside, he's there out he is, so that's going through, he's pulled straight in with the, the tidal Nick wave as well, and that was nicely done by Nick. He knew it outlast here, so I saw it's like, oh, should I go for it, and he went in, it's an outlast, so it's got punished, and a kill for Gambit, still, still lost the tower though. Still, it's a 10, 000, ten and a half thousand gold if we're uh, really counting this one. 15 7 up in kills. If you look across the board, there's four with at least three for Peke on Ziggs. Reckless is 3 0 4. Yellow Star has continued his trend of playing absolutely brilliantly over these last couple of weeks. He's got 13 assists out of the 15 kills. Part of every kill. And he's been part of every kill because two kills actually fall into him. There's Swiss and Fate going to pop the Destiny, but there's a TP around the back. Soas is going to go man mode. He might find himself one versus three though here. Rest of the team coming, but very slowly. Darren, what are they going to do? There's the kick on towards Diamond. Have they got the damage? Of course they've got the damage. It's going to be Soas. Oh no, Reckless that gets that one to go on the rampage. Q will let not to end. Edward as well. Oh, oh what a stone against the wall. And Edward now will be the next one to go down to Reckless. Fnatic are in a five versus three to siege the tower. Let's see here. They are actually moving towards the Baron. So want to pick up the Baron buff and then go towards the base of Gambit Gaming. Once again, two kills. Teleport behind from Source with Lee Sin just coming and kicks Diamond back. Doesn't even matter who he kicks back at this point. You just want to kill someone. Keep chasing up here. It's going to be Baron for Fnatic. Full control here. Gambit lost on 29 minutes to SK Gaming. Seems like they will be able, or they need to hold two more minutes here. Otherwise, Fnatic can do the exact same thing SK Gaming did to Gambit. And it's been pretty much the same story for Gambit. They fell behind early, don't really have any war control, have no real pressure on the map. They try to make some plays, it backfires, and the other team just get really far ahead early on. Wasn't, wasn't Millennium like 10,000 gold ahead by 20 minutes? Yes. It's a similar scenario here. It is. Not in a similar way, but this is also a similar story to how Fnatic beat Millennium True. as well. So, some real similarities between the games so far this week and Super Week. And I'll tell you what, Gambit themselves, we talk about the Copenhagen Wolves down there at the bottom of the table. Gambit aren't all that far away from them at this point. No, they really have issues early game. Copenhagen will choose some stupid fights in the early game where they need to still scale up with their champions. Gambit overall, when it comes to early game, especially aggression, they seem to lag behind. And that's where often the other team gets very far ahead. And Darren often ends up dying quite a lot. Edward plays very aggressive. Sometimes it backfires. He gives a few kills away. And overall, it's just very hard for them. And they don't really itemize uh, towards a stronger early mid game. They go towards late game items. Which also makes it even harder for them to actually come back once they fall behind these early mid game points. You should also note that Quicksilver Sash, although he was done a little while ago, is with Reckless. So that basically takes him out of harm's way, if you like, from Diamond. Uh, ultimate will be uh, able to be escaped from for Reckless. And there we go, they're just going to go straight on towards the tower. Couple more auto attacks will do it. Cocoon's landed on towards Darien. Have they got the damage to finish through? They just want this in here now. That's going to create all the more pressure for Gambit to be trying to hold on against this barren up Fnatic team that have got a 
15,000 gold lead against them. They do need to go to the sidelines though and push them out. Top lane seems to be the target for them and can they can do the same thing. Move up to the tower, brute force your way and just hit the tower as much as possible. Back away if Gambit looks to engage, otherwise you will just take down the tower like we saw here in the mid lane. We also just saw the damage that before. Trying to set up a bit of a trap here. Okay, and yellow start waiting off on the curve brush. Will anyone come through? Nope, there's a scan on the ward, and then he's like, ah, could have got a bubble in there if I'd have just tried that one. No real follow up to be had though from Gambit, and now finally that wave of minions has pushed on through. There's the ulti on towards Edward, and well, <laughs> he has to just flash away from that one instantly. Knew that the follow up would probably be enough to knock him down and out of this game. There's another minion wave coming in. The bouncing bombs and zoning power of Ziggs continuing to be a problem and stopping Gambit from really holding on. There's the kick in towards Diamond, who instantly is going to flash straight yeah. back in towards his team. So has then was the focus, but that's all Fnatic really wanted here is to draw attention away from the defense of the turret and take it down. Source is very low though without teleport. Fnatic still staying around with the Bam buff. Really want to get down the second inhibitor, so they just have super minions from two lanes pushing into Gambit's base, making it even harder for Gambit to actually come back in this game. But we might see Gambit go for the fight with Source so low. This should be the time for him. He's actually recalling. They need to go and fight here. Oh, Diamond actually stepping forward. They're going to go for Sight. Now it's a good bubble to the back. Are they going to be able to finish off? A good repel comes in. Ulti from Xpeke. There's going to be at least one kill from this one. The rest of Gambit pushed incredibly low and look at that the super minions are coming through Fnatic in a five versus four may have enough here to finish off the game after 30 minutes it looks like they will both Nexus so it's going down the constant damage from Ziggs at the back being a problem Nexus now going to be focused Darian's going to dive man mode in he's going to pay the price wow. dive once again at the end and the Nexus now free to be taken down Fnatic going to be picking up a win not before they've gone for a few more kills though Nick finished off there Pekka gets the double the Nexus is going to fall and Fnatic keeps up their solid run here in Super Week they are definitely looking strong at the moment Yellowstar 100% kill participation he's part of everything his wards are there spot on he's setting up kills and Fnatic just overall looking very very good the picks work out for them Source Again, they send in this top lane here, finding the kills, finding the picks they need. Gambit on the other hand. Kind of the opposite. Yeah, relegation must be a real fear right now. Especially because Four Rocket games. has started winning games. Exactly. I mean, Rocket, yeah, did some slow games, but they win them. And that's the issue, because it's Rocket, Copenhagen of Wolves and Gambit staying around close to each other in the standings. The team's fighting to get the last playoff spot. So of course avoid relegation, but Rocket, they do pick up some, some wins. Gambit and Copenhagen Wolves, they need to start doing the same. I said this earlier, six wins out of nine from Rocket. It's kind of hard to really get that into your head because they don't seem like a team that has won six out of their last nine games. But all importantly, they don't look great. Those wins aren't pretty. They take seemingly forever to finish games. They don't feel confident. Overpower himself looked really down yesterday when we interviewed him even after a win it's yep. like you know what we just we've got no confidence we're not sure where we're going wrong and but how we're going to fix it but they do win and that's something that Gambit aren't managing that's something that the Copenhagen Wolves certainly aren't managing and there's going to be a real intense battle down the bottom of the table you have to wonder for these two teams Gambit and the Copenhagen Wolves in particular where the wins are going to come from and what's going to change because we're halfway through the season and they've not got enough wins at this point. And the hardest thing for Gambit is how do they fix these issues because they still have to travel. Yeah. It's always been an issue for Gambit in the LCS, the fact they have to travel back and forth and you have less time to practice than the other teams and you have all these issues you need to sort out. I'm not sure if they're going to go into some boot camp, try to go into boot camp for a few weeks and see if it works to work out the issues. It would definitely be an option because it is an issue for them and it's a shame they have to, to travel back and forth. It's full respect for Gambit for the fact they can play so well, yeah. like they've done in the past years with all the travels back and forth. It's a grueling schedule, there's yeah. no doubt about that one. And Gambit have in the past said, you know what, boot camp is the way that we do it. You'd see them bunkered up for a week, a week and a half, two weeks before major events. But the LCS is a, a different kettle of fish, a different beast because you have to play on a weekly basis. You know, a normal week you have two games to play for, four games in Super Week, really, really hard schedule. 
We also have to say on the other side, Fnatic, another victory, three out of three so far in Super Week, go tied with SK Gaming in second position. We're actually going to go to Shox and Quickshot, who are standing by with Fnatic's mid laner and Xpeke. So let's find out if there's some more insight into that match. Thank you very much, Joe. Uh, first off, congratulations, Xpeke. The curse is broken. You're not going to go equal. You're at least going to go three and one. So uh, uh, congratulations on that game. Talk me through picks and bans and why for the Ziggs, we know how many teams put a high emphasis on Twisted Fate, and you guys as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I expected them to ban Thix or something, because it, I don't know, I don't really understand their bans. When they ban Orianna, it's a bit weird that they leave Thix open, no wood first pick it. And then we pretty much had a really strong champion already. Then we thought they would pick Jungle, not the TF already, because we had the Thix already, but then they just picked TF and Lucian, so we could get Lee Sin and Eve, which are really strong champions, where I think Diamond is way better on those than he is on Skarner. Uh, so when we had those champions, pretty much, we, feel really, we felt really confident already that we had good champions. And their setup was not that great, uh, so we could pick uh, Bane already, just let her free farm. And we knew that the moment we just keep going equal until Lagan will win, but we even won the, we managed to win the early pretty hard, and Bane was really strong. Yeah, the game was definitely very one-sided. Uh, it felt like you guys were definitely sending a message. Two confident wins yesterday, another one today. Explain to me why Soez is running Lee Sin top, Ziggs top. Why is it working? Is it 4.10? Is it something you've done as a team? Or, you know, I'm just looking for more insights. I think it's more, more as a team. Like, he, he played them before, and I think he played them... Sometimes it might not work, but Thix is a strong champion that works really... It's maybe not the best versus all the matchup, but in some matches it's really good because he farms on top really easily. And the thing with Lee Sin is he's, he's super strong because he's not going to lose the lane. He's maybe not going to own his lane, but he can roam. And the Soas is really good at that. He knows when to move, when to do the insects really good, and when to flash kick someone. And it's like a really hard engage to have Lee Sin on our top lane since he's going to be way more tanky than on jungle and he can freely go in whenever he wants, go out, go in and wait for the perfect engage. Uh, we want to turn our attention to your um, opponents in the league right now for a second and I want to actually start with Gamut in this matchup because you've been playing versus Gamut in the same core of players for a couple of years now. What do you think it is that they s don't seem to get going anymore in the season? Uh, I don't know, it's hard to tell from them. It just, it just feels like they kind of lose track of the game. Before they knew where they had to go, what they had to do, and now it just, they kind of know, they, they seem to have lost it a bit there. The thing, even with, when they had Alex already, they just started to slowly become works. They had games that they were good, they had games that they were bad, but not, now it just feels like they are not as strong as a team that they, as they were before. I don't think they, there are some games that they do really good individually, but then it comes to, to team play, to rotations, to everything, and they are just a bit lost. Sometimes they do something good, but most of the time they are following the other guys, the enemy team rotations. Well, turning our attention to something a little more positive, you are on 499 regular season kills. Not sure if you're aware of that. If you pick up one more, it'll be your 500th kill which means it's most likely going to happen against the Lions tomorrow. If the Lions pick up a win against Copenhagen Wolves, the two teams will be on 3-0. and Who is going to win 4-0 in Super Week and why? Hmm. That's hard to tell. That's hard to tell. Like, like I said, for, for me, I think for us, was to go 3-1 this week. Like 2-2 two -two was something that was uh, probably going to happen. 3-1 was something that could happen if we didn't play bad. And 4-0 is something that can happen if we play really good. Like, like, I don't think today we played that good, even though it seemed like we had control. I don't think we played that good. I think we played better yesterday. So if, if tomorrow we play like yesterday and we get a good setup, I think we can beat them. Why is Fnatic so much more dominant in Super Week? You guys are 3-0, and and you look like the team that has won all of the playoffs, which we haven't necessarily seen all of the previous weeks. What's different t yesterday and today? Uh, the difference, I don't know what's the difference from yesterday and today. I, I don't know. Just I guess, uh, we were maybe more awake. We had two games. The first, ga the first game as well is easier for us. This one was a bit too late for us. So maybe I was asleep at least. But <laughs> Past your bedtime. But yeah, yeah um, one final question about that. Let's turn it to you personally because you've been very vocal in the past also about I've been playing this game for so long. Sometimes it is pretty hard to find a motivation. What is that like right now in, in this heat of the season and the importance of the, of the games right now? I, th I think it always happened to us. Like last year, it pretty much happened the same, at least personally, and I think to everyone. When the season, you just finish a season, then you start another one, and then you are like, okay, here we go again at the beginning. You know, it feels a bit weird the first weeks. Even though you're, you are kind of motivated, you like the game, you don't really have ambitions at first at the split. But then when the end is coming, even if you are not playing at your best, you kind of 
you kind of think about it. Okay, there are only a few weeks left. Let's let's try to give our best these weeks and see what happens. Maybe even if we don't make it, we are gonna give our best and and not. We, it's, I hate the worst. At least the worst feeling you can have is when we lose by one game or something, and then we are like, if we practice one week more, we could have made it. So I think it's the best to practice when the end is coming for the super weeks where you can win four games in a. Like if you have a bad day, it's really bad. But if you are really prepared and you win four games, you pretty much got one or two positions up in the ladder. Always remember that there's a lot of people that want to be in your guys' shoes. So <laughs> congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Now let's flash back over to Joe and the Fisher at the desk for an update on the standings. Thank you very much, guys. And with that match complete, let's take a look at where the team stand after 11 matches so far this week. Alliance is riding a seven-game winning streak and have the best start to a split for any team in the European LCS ever. They remain in first place now at 14 for two. SK Gaming's two losses today combined with Fnatic, Fnatic's win have the two teams now tied for second with 10 wins and seven losses. And Millennium have moved into a tie for fourth with the Super Hawk crew where both teams are nine and eight. And of course the Super Week action continues tomorrow starting with the Copenhagen Wolves facing Alliance. And later in the day, Alliance second game will find them taking on Fnatic in a battle at the top of the table. And those matches, they start on Thursday at 5 p.m. Central European Summertime, which is 8 a.m. Pacific. And until then, for myself, the Fischio, Quick Shot, Demon Shocks, and the entire LCS broadcast team, thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Welcome to the European League of Legends Championship Series. The teams will need to bring their A game if they want to stay in the running and what's the spot at the 2014 World Championships. It was just farm on their tower until we hit a certain level. And then we start winning. The Void is on the way, catches beautifully from them there, the bubble on towards. Also, Jesus gets him down, one more shot, Candy Banner goes down, and Rating called out, he gets stunned up. We can surrender if yeah, you want. you wanna just FF this? Wait, I'm coming. <laughs> Yeah, we can. And it's a 20 minute surrender, ladies and gentlemen. What a game. <laughs> Let's win this game. Rockhand is going to get focused on towards, but the damage is going down 90 from Overpower. He's still alive around the side there. Kill does manage to get himself one kill. Celebo replies. He goes back on towards Kevin. Gets himself a second. <laughs> Cannon? It says, oh, I'm in India. I can't uh, hear it. No, uh, Smaller oh, targets are easier to hit. <laughs> that doesn't make what? sense. <laughs> oh, come on, guys. Oh, oh. Ready to take a very low as well. It's Candy Panda. They want to get on Jesse in trouble. He has to use the Zonia's out as intervention on himself. He goes down. Selfie just focuses on through the rest of the team. Candy Panda focuses on. He gets dropped down. Millennium versus Gambit. Remember Leon and Corky OP lane? I do, but <laughs> you just need to go. Hey, in. People play different right now. You can't all in level two and people die. It's gonna be real bad news for Millennium again. The Sonic Sonic's letting in. Sam Connect is gonna be coming around the side, but will it be too late? Jerry gonna go low. He's gone away. He's managed to get away. Connect is onto Diamond. Hasn't got the damage to finish him off. Creator may just have head is low. And Edward may fall as well. I go in. Nice. I stand for man. Nice. Stunner. Keep on. Nice. 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 Now we ban KO. First pick Yasu. What if they ban Yasu? Wait, then we have nothing left from it. Like. <laughs> There's the knock up. Has he got enough damage? He does, but he falls. There's the repel as well. Going from limited now. The damage surely there. Shield. Oh, no. Somebody around. There's a polymorph as well. A wall out goes down. versus Gambit, our final match of the day. And Peke needs to get away from this one. Gold card will follow through, and Genja gets the kill on that one. Diamond in the middle of nowhere, but he's grabbed the yellow star, and that's a double kill now for Genja.